appreciate it. Um, kind of give you a little history. You know, transportation network companies haven't been around a real long time. I was kind of made aware of them here in the last two years or so. And most of us are aware of a company called Uber. And I checked into their business model and I was pretty skeptical of how they operate or from what I little I knew. So the more I looked into it, the more I found out, the more I became convinced that our city ordinances needed to be looked at to, to determine the feasibility of a service such as Uber. I did find out that our current vehicle for hire ordinances would be so restrictive to an individual operating under such a business model that they could probably not legally do so or be so burdensome that they wouldn't even want to. Over time, with the help of Jim David, uh, Keith Ellis, Ellenstein from our city attorney's office, Jamie Palmer, our licensing clerk, and I also involved counselors uh, Rolfing, Jameson, and Erickson in our meetings, we've been able to prepare some draft legislation that does two things. One, it adds to the ordinances sections that allow for individuals to operate for a, t a transportation network company, and two, refines a few parts of the existing ordinances that may be too burdensome um, for typical vehicle for hire companies that they wouldn't even consider um, coming to Sioux Falls. Uh, transport na transportation network companies, which I'm gonna call TNCs, are present in hundreds of cities around the company and around the world, and they're known by such names as Lyft, Uber, and others. As an aside to that, I was stopped at Starbucks on the way over and ran into a gentleman I know, and he was having coffee with a young um, USF student, and I said I was going to be presenting about this today, and I asked him if either of them had used it, and the, the USF student said, yes, I was in Cairo this summer, and I used Uber in Cairo. So it is around the world and present everywhere. The typical transportation network company uses a phone-based app for the driver's and passengers, so you basically have to have a smartphone, an Android, or an iPhone. For drivers to become accepted into the independent network of a TNC, and this is important, for a driver to become a driver, they have to pass a criminal background check, and the vehicle is usually less than 10 years old and in a condition acceptable to the TNC. The driver is an independent contractor, and from our conversations with Uber and Lyft, they do receive a 1099 tax statement for the service they provide. Our conversation with Uber said that they collect and remit sales tax for the fare collected. So that's important to note. Potential passengers of a TNC have to pre-register for a ride in a TNC vehicle. So you can't just call up Uber and say, I want to ride, you have to sign up long before, you have to provide your credit card information um, so that when you do request a ride and the ride or that is accepted, the TNC then charges you for the amount agreed to before the ride is accepted, which is different than a typical taxi cab because a taxi, you don't know typically for sure what the fare is going to be until the ride is completed. With a TNC, you agree to the fare before the ride. Uh, once you request a ride, you can track on your cell phone where that driver is, when they're going to, you know, where their vehicle is. It gives a, a map that shows them um, driving up to you, basically, and tells you about what time they'll arrive. Uh, public safety by transportation network companies is paramount to the operation within our city and within their business model. The passenger of a TNC. Um, provided ride through their web app, knows the year, they see a picture of the vehicle, the make, the model, and license plate number of the vehicle that's picking them up. They know the name of the driver and have a picture of the driver before that driver arrives. The entire ride is tracked through the web app and the route taken and any stops made are recorded. That's important to notice when, note for when I get to the insurance section of the discussion. Both the driver and the passenger of a TNC ride are given the opportunity to critique each other. And I wouldn't say it's, I'd say it's probably even way beyond opportunity. Um, from what I understand, if you have received a ride 
um, on a company like Uber, they pretty much bombard you with emails requesting a critique before, I mean, if you don't give it, they're gonna keep asking and asking. So they want you to critique their drivers and if the driver receives a bad report, they're pulled from the TNC database until their deficiencies are corrected. And a passenger that gets a bad critique from a driver may have a difficult time obtaining a ride in the future. The primary reason I initiated the proposed changes that you're about to see is in the spirit of fostering free enterprise and entrepreneurship within our community. Since the beginning of the, since beginning the process, I've heard from numerous people that travel frequently that they would like to see TNC services available as an alternative to traditional taxi service. We're not doing this to replace taxis, this is just an alternative to our citizenry. Many other cities have been or are going down the same road that we are. We have taken what we feel is the best of what others are doing or what they have done. Recently, the state of North Dakota enacted emergency legislation that takes away the ability of mun municipalities to regulate TNCs. I've read the law, it's very brief, I feel it's very weak and potentially damaging to the way a typical taxi company probably works. We can lead the way in South Dakota by passing comprehensive changes to our vehicle for hire ordinances that allow the citizens the ability to choose who and how they do business. Now, Jim and I are gonna walk through most of the changes we are proposing. Um, I'm going to start, Jim Felt, with my limited insurance background that I could probably cover the first section, so that was humor. <laughs> All righty. The insurance requirements. We're going to be making changes, like I said, not only to by adding, but maybe taking away from um, some of our existing ordinances. We do not require of most businesses that operate in Sioux Falls that they carry business insurance. We do with... Um, taxi cabs or vehicle for hires for their primary business, not for their vehicles, but for their businesses, so you would be striking that language. We would leave in the language um, under 124.046, minimum limits of coverage, that they do have to have at least half a million dollars in bodily injury and property damage for their vehicles. Um, for the transportation network companies, we would be adding well, first, you have to understand the way a TNC operates. The drivers are under two levels, okay? When they sign on, when they get on their phone and they say, I'm available, I'll take, I'll take when people are looking, I, I will be considered to pick them up. That's level one. And level two is when they are actually driving their passenger, okay? Um, so they are available or they're providing. Under level one, um, basically they've signed on and said, if somebody wants a ride, I'll do it. And I have to remember that the typical TNC driver drives less than 10 hours a week, okay? So it's very limited. Um, they might be signed on for five hours and not have anybody request a ride. It, it's possible. They could go the whole day without anybody or the whole time they're signed on. So during that time, they just have to provide the minimum state required liability limits. Um, under section two, uh, sorry, did we get to ahead of me? Okay, yep, okay. Um, so they have to have under section one, the minimum required by South Dakota fight, codified law for insurance. And under section two there, um, if the, if the uh, insurance company doesn't provide it, the TNC's um, policy will. Um, going on to the next section, while they're logged on to the service, um, going back again to the minimum limits for the taxi service, there's a half a million there. The TNCs just have a limit of a million dollars from what we've seen, so their limit is actually double what our requirement is for our taxi services. Um, 
It also has to provide uninsured motorist <coughs> as required by South Dakota Fied Cotta Law, South Dakota Codified Law, which would be $100,000 under that circumstance. Um, with this section, 124049, they would meet all the requirements of South Dakota law. Um, going on to the next one, um, where insurance made by, maintained by a TNC driver to fulfill the insurance requirements has lapsed, the TNC insurance becomes primary. So in South Dakota law, insurance laws, the primary insurance is the vehicle, the insurance on the vehicle. If that insurance is not valid or lapsed, then the TNCs becomes primary. So they would always be with coverage. And it's just with any company that's authorized to do business or as a excess or surplus lines insurer in the state of South Dakota. What I found interesting, and this comes from other, again, other, um, from other sources that we decided to include, is the disclosure requirement. A private passenger auto policy um, does not provide coverage when you're providing a service such as a TNC for a TNC or delivering a pizza or delivering flowers or anything for a a fare or a charge. Um, the TNC has to disclose to their drivers that their insurance will not provide coverage to them. Okay. And um, not only the liability, but the, the TNC's insurance only provides liability coverage. It does not provide coverage for collision or coverage to the vehicle itself. So it's important that the drivers know that because if you have a newer vehicle that's financed, um, and you have an accident while you're providing a ride, the people that you hurt are covered, but the damage to your vehicle probably won't be. Um, and under the next, um, continue under the disclosures, it just basically goes on to say that um, the TNC will notify the drivers of what coverage is provided by their policy. Um, and it's up to the driver at that point to decide if they want to continue on or not. <clears throat> Under the last section um, for disclosure requirements, it requires the TNCs to cooperate with the insurance companies so that everybody knows who was signed on when, where they were and such. That goes back to the safety issue. Plus it also goes back to enforceability of our insurance disclosure requirements. So that covers the um, insurance section. Glad I didn't put you to sleep. I'm gonna let Jim David talk about the rest because it gets real exciting from here. Good afternoon, Jim David, Legislative Operations Manager for the City Council. This amended ordinance defines a personal vehicle. So we'll start with the definitions uh, and the changes and we'll slowly just make it through the entire ordinance. And so every change that has been made uh, is being presented to this uh, committee. The amended ordinance defines a personal vehicle, says that it is owned, leased, or authorized to be used by the driver. The personal vehicle cannot be a vehicle for hire which is a taxi, bus, limousine, livery vehicles, and other vehicles for hire. The, the proposal also defines a transportation network company, or TNZ. These are companies that operate, or excuse me, a TNC operates a digital network or software application service that connects passengers to the TNC driver. These are companies, as Councilor Karski had said, are Lyft, Uber, Sidecar, and Wings, and there are others. It's a growing list. The TNC driver is the individual who operates the motor vehicle and is connected to the passenger through the TNC software. The vehicle, as Councilor Karski had said, must be 10 years or newer. The TNC services begin when the TNC driver accepts a request through the digital network or software application and ends when the passenger exits the vehicle. A TNC is prohibited from receiving any street hails. Cash may not exchange hand for services. 
The TNC will be responsible for disclosing the fare calculation and rates to the passenger through the software application service or web. A TNC is also required to provide an estimated fare before the passenger enters the vehicle if it's requested by the passenger. The proposal, <clears throat> the proposal also requires that the TNC software provide a driver's picture license and license plate number. The TNC must also provide an electronic receipt following a trip and maintain customer records based on both trips and drivers for one year. A carrier license, which allows alcohol sales within a vehicle for hire, is prohibited within a TNC vehicle. This proposal does not require, or does, excuse me, this proposal does require that each TNC business be licensed with the City of Sioux Falls. The license fee is still under consideration, but many municipalities do charge a considerable amount for this license. The business license application is detailed in this proposal. Just bringing out number six, this is the TNC representative that closely works with the city and the licensee agent. This proposal also does require proof of sales tax license and driver's license numbers for background check purposes. This, this ordinance does exempt drivers from being licensed with the city. A person wishing to become a TNC driver must apply with the TNC. The applicant must provide information regarding his or her address, driver's license, driving history, motor vehicle registration for the vehicle, and it has to be a vehicle for the last 10 years or newer, automobile liability insurance information, and other information that what may be required by the TNC. The, TN the TNC shall conduct or have a third party conduct a local national criminal background checks for each applicant. This will include a multi-state, multi-jurisdiction criminal record locator or other similar nationwide database, uh, commercial nation, excuse me, commercial nationwide database with validation such as the primary source search and also they do look at the National Sex Registry. The TNC shall obtain and review a driving history research report for such individuals. The TNC is also prohibits anyone uh, to act as a TNC driver on its platform who has had three or more moving violations in the prior three years, three year period, or one major violation in the past three year period has been convicted within the last seven years of driving under the influence of drugs, alcohol, fraud, sexual offenses, or, excuse me, use of motor vehicle to commit felony, a crime involving property damage or theft, acts of violence, or acts of terror. Is a match in the, sex, in the National Sex Offender Registry database, does not possess a valid driver's license, does not possess proof of registration for the motor vehicle used to provide TNC service, does not possess proof of automobile liability insurance for the motor vehicle used to provide the services and is at least 19 years of age. This proposal does not, uh, not only addresses the TNCs, but it also reduces some of the regulations on taxi cabs, buses, limousines. The annual certified inspections under this proposal would be removed but in its place would continue the existing 3,000 three-month inspections that are done by the taxi cab or by the vehicle for hire. And due to that, the definition of certified mechanic was removed from the ordinance. This proposal also removes the requirement that a vehicle for hire business provide an office that's accessible during normal business hours. I'd be happy in answering your questions. I know Councilor Karski would also. Any questions from the council for uh, Councilor Karski or Jim David? And then I'll open it up also for additional public input. Uh, if any other councilors or um, anybody else that has attended, I know we have a couple of taxi cab representatives here if they'd like to address as well. Councilor Staggers. <laughs> yeah, I just have one quick question or so. Uh, also in this, there's a statement that there's be no street uh, hails. Uh, can somebody explain why that's the case? 
Yes, thank you, Councillor Staggers. Street hails are typically a function of a typical taxi company, and we're really trying by the um, definition, in fact, by the business model of a TNC that they do not accept street hails as part of their business model. So we're really trying to keep the line between a, a standard vehicle prior taxi company and a, a TNC clear. Uh, well, I guess I would uh, say that the purpose of both taxi cabs and TNCs are the same thing. It's, you know, to, to a provide, large extent it is, you know, yes. A yes. service from point A to point B and um, I agree. Also, maybe if I could ask uh, another question about, you have to be at least, what, 19 years of age to, to be That's a, a requirement to not, we put it in there, it's, it's typically what most of the TNCs have as a requirement for the, to be a driver. So we just went with what they're using already. Okay. Um, Go ahead, yeah. Councilor Rippenbach. I, um, a couple of things. I've used Uber as all, all of us have. This isn't some, we aren't bringing aliens from another planet here. This works other places. It really is okay, you know. Um, the thing that surprised me when we started this conversation, not today, but several weeks ago, was how strict Uber is compared to our city ordinances in terms of the drivers, the driver's behavior. That, and, and when you look at this, the national registry, we don't do anything national. We do our you know background checks on drivers and those kinds of things. So I think that's important to understand. So this is, it'll be more difficult to be an Uber driver in Sioux Falls than it will be to be a taxi driver in Sioux Falls. Is that a fair assessment? Uh, to, on some, under some circumstances, yes. Um, Keith Allenstein would point out that um, locally we may be privy to pending things and part of our local for taxi cabs is that for any good cause where that would be difficult with um, a, a TNC. So one of the reasons that we wanted to know, their, their drivers truly are proprietary information so they didn't want to share their driving list with us but they said they would provide limited information on based on driver's license who they are we know i mean we can plug in just based on the last four or five digits of a license and have a reasonable amount of certainty that if your last four digits match this number you're probably that person so it'd just be a, kind of another catch for us i guess to use not foolproof or perfect but um yeah, the thing, to your point, uh, TNCs have to protect their business model, and if they're not careful about who they're putting in vehicles and um, protecting the people that are using them, their their business model is doomed to failure. So right. I, I would agree. Exactly, and, and I think, too, to, to Councillor Stagger's point about the not hailing on the street, that's part of the business model, that you are not, if you're a, a driver for one of these companies, you are not to take, and you're not to take cash, you're not to take a tip, even, because they're going to take a cut of everything you collect. And by the time I, as a customer, have gotten into that car, I've already paid. And in many cities, at least the, the places that I've been, it's been kind of a standard rate. And maybe it was because I was going the same distance every time, but I paid about the same amount at every, every time I got in an Uber car. Um, so there's some pretty strict standards for those folks if they're going to get involved with this. And, and so I think, you know, certainly we need to have this conversation about whether this fits Sioux Falls, and, and, and I don't believe it does any sort of negative to our taxi companies, but I, I, think, I think we need to be having this conversation. We need to be about this, and, and be in, but be, let's be straight about it. This is a difficult thing for people to, to qualify to, to do, to be an Uber driver. Agreed, and, um, you know, it went away. I'm sorry, I'll think about it, and I'll, I'll reply, but, um, Oh, I, I know what I'm saying. You know, a TNC is not um, for everybody. I mean, some people are just going to be more comfortable calling a standard taxi. Some people are going to, you know, want to have a taxi for whatever reason. Um, and others are going to want to use a TNC. It just gives people that choice. Well, I think if I could just continue just a minute longer, because I'm like you, 
Councillor Karski, I kind of forgot what I was going to ask too, but I th you asked me earlier what I thought about this and I kind of gave you a face because I'm really not sure. But some of the things that I've been looking at were those ideas of, you know, our sales taxes in South Dakota and um, the 1099. How do you, when you declare yourself an independent contractor, I can just say that I'm an independent contractor and I don't have to pay anything because I just said I am, right? No, and, and I think that's what you've made very clear in this presentation is that we are going to get our sales tax out of this. We are going to get the 1099 that these folks are going to have to pay. You know, it's not going to be some free and easy thing for them to do. And I think that's important to understand in the overall global conversation we're going to have about this. We are doing our best to level the playing field, yes. And, so, so. and one Thanks. of the things just in response to the, the sales tax, um, each driver is required to have their own sales tax license and they have to remit the tax. So it's usually like an 80-20 split. So for example, Uber would be responsible for paying sales tax on that 20% and then uh, the TNC driver would be responsible for paying the sales tax on that 80%. We did have conversations um, asking them to go ahead and voluntarily remit since they have the software capability and back into the tax. Um, just so each driver doesn't have to have a license and it's just less reporting, um, less hassle for Department of Revenue to try to find these people and figure out if they're licensed or not um, and kind of chasing their tail. And it would be more of a guarantee if Uber would just voluntarily do it. Um, they didn't outright say no, but they didn't outright say yes. So it was definitely something that um, we kind of pressed them on during our conference calls to ask them to go ahead and remit it all at once. It's more of a guarantee for us and it's very simple they're doing it already back into it it's a benefit to their their 1099s to not have to remit it also and we're getting that potential tax whether it's in Sioux Falls or wherever if if the uber companies and the TNCs expand to other communities as well um, so that that's kind of where the conversation went with that so it's not necessarily a guarantee but I would hope that they would just well, remit it on behalf of everybody. Don't you think they're going to get enough pushback in enough communities? I mean, we're not we're not new at this. We're not the only ones that are trying this. They're going to get enough pushback nationwide that that they're going to end up doing it, whether they do it just for us or not. And I guess the other question I would have for you. Sorry, you sat down, but the other question I'd have is, it's and it's the item that we continue to be. Um, it continues to be brought up, and it came up in an email again today. Is that idea of Taxi companies are brick and mortar businesses in a lot of cases, and they hire their drivers as employees and they pay workers comp and they pay bennies and they all of those things. What's your response to that, to that argument that we really aren't making a level playing field? Welcome to the 20th century. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be cold. I mean, you know, if you're a phone company and you had a phone booth on the corner, that phone booth just isn't there anymore. People don't have home home phones anymore. Um, you know, it's we, you know, doing business the way you did in the 50s, 60s, 70s, or even the 90s is probably you know you're going to have to evolve. And um, we talk about free enterprise competition and. Um, the buying public driving, you know, businesses to do what businesses have to do, basically. So it, 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 they're going to have to evolve, and we're trying to make it easier for them to do business by removing some of our requirements and, and leveling that playing field. Well, then, then can I ask on behalf of Councillor Staggers, who has argued with me on the taxi cab regulations from, since the beginning of time, then why do we regulate them at all? And you know, and I ask that question myself. Where where does the where does that begin? Why did we why did we start regulating taxi cab companies? And I think truly it just goes back to um, public safety. Mm -hmm. I mean that's that's the the always the concern of a legislative or governing body that um, we here as counselors said, what are you doing to make sure that I'm safe when I'm doing this or using that so that I'm not being I'm taking an unfair advantage of, or that I'm putting my personal safety in jeopardy. What do you need? What do you do? What's the next well, step? Mrs. Just Madam first, Chair? before I guess we we address any next steps, I just want to open it up. If there's anybody in the audience that would like to address the committee, if you have any comments, <coughs> concerns, or give that opportunity. Okay. Nope. Okay. I'll, I'll turn it back over to uh, the committee then. Um, 
as a, as a committee, what steps would you like to make? What would you, do you wanna move this forward to the full council for ordinance change? Do you? Let me just uh, ask for some clarification. Yes. <clears throat> if we didn't pass this ordinance, would Uber be able to still come and operate in Sioux Falls or not? Councillor Karski, I don't wanna, Councillor Karski, I don't wanna, I don't wanna misspeak for you. The question was, and I think I know the answer, but I just wanna make sure we're all on the same, mm -hmm. same uh, area. Councillor Stagers was asking, if we pass this ordinance, will this allow Uber to come? And my first inkling would say yes, no, based I'm, on the conversation. No, if we don't pass it. If we don't it, pass, pass it. it. Uber, can they still come to Sioux Falls? They can, and they, they're dealing with other cities, some bigger and some smaller than us, that um, they find it difficult to do business. Um, there's people that w won't sign up to be a driver or maybe even to use the service because um, publicly they know that there's been issues. Um, so could they come into our community even without this? I, I'd say yes, but I'd go back to my opening comments that it would be um, extremely difficult for anybody to be a driver for Uber without violating all of our vehicle for hire ordinances the way they're written and um, subject themselves to you know, civil fines or penalties. So you're saying that if we do pass this, this is gonna create more competition and by creating more competition, is gonna be better for Sioux Falls. I firmly believe that, yes, sir. And that would, what, that would be my request of this committee is to um, set a date for first and second reading to ordinance change. So that's your call. Councilor from back. I, I, just to continue what I kind of started saying earlier, I'm way more comfortable with this now than I have been. I'm, I'm glad to see the work of the group. Um, that has, I mean, you guys have really dug in and I appreciate that because I was skeptical, even though I, I use Uber in other towns I have and more than one other city used it. Um, I was really skeptical based on the amount of time we spent with the vehicle for hire ordinance not that long ago. But that being said, I do, I agree with Councilor Karski. I think we need to move it forward, but then I would like to see a significant period of time, more than a week, more than a couple weeks, maybe three weeks between first and second reading so that we really have some time to digest it. The media can play with it a little bit and maybe folks have more conversation. I just, just to give thoughts, but go ahead. That's just my idea. In fact, that's what we were talking about that we you know, would like time to hear from people and at the same time give our legal department more time to look at it. I mean, we've been working on it with them, but you know, there, there are a few things that we're looking at still. So, I mean, if we did a first reading the first of October and the second reading later in October, I mean, that, that's plenty fine. We don't have to, we're not fast tracking this by any means. Yeah. So. That puts it on the books by the first of the year then, ish, you know, if you... I don't know. No. So the first reading would be um, Tuesday, October 6th. And then uh, the second reading um, could be the 20th. Or what about that the two first weeks? week in November? Yeah, it'll make it first. Or the first week. November 3rd. November 2nd. 2nd, yeah, well, that's right, because we switched that. I think so. Does that sound sufficient to you, Councillor? Mm -hmm. Gives it a couple I think of as a, weeks. Uh, do we need to vote on that? <coughs> No. That would be my motion. First reading the dates that you announced, announced and second reading in that first week in November, the date that you announced. That first reading, October 6th. <coughs> second reading, November 2nd. Sounds sufficient? Sounds good. I was favor. told we don't need to. All in favor? I'll second oh, I, that. Yeah. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All right. Uh, any open discussion? Anything? anybody all right i will adjourn our public service meeting today thank you all